Welcome back, everybody. It has been a minute since we have had an episode of the Back Lounge podcast. I'm going to see if I can remember how to do all this stuff. Well, if you're new here, my name's Tank. I'm your host. I'm a roadie with over 15 years of experience in the touring music industry. And on this podcast, we just have on band members, artists, other roadies, and really anybody else in the music industry or just in the realm of music. And we just have conversations about whatever, man. And I love this because I don't go out of my way to prepare questions or anything. I just hit record, talk to our guests, and we usually have really cool conversations. And our special guest for today is going to be really, really cool. We've got one of the vocalists for Electric Callboy, Kevin Ratajczak. Now, before we get into all of that, I just want to talk to you guys and get you up to date with what's going on with me for a minute because I just had to look over at my other screen. I thought our last episode of this was maybe a month ago. Uh, August 20th, over two months ago, was the last episode of the Back Lounge podcast. And that's nuts, but there is a reason for that. Uh, For those of you that have been following along on social media and YouTube, you guys know that my wife and I have been moving and we have finally completed our move. We're out of the city of Nashville now, out in the suburbs. And we've just been super busy with stuff around the house and fixing stuff up. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can see the wall behind me. I finally have my office space set up the way that I want it. So I'm slowly easing back into content, lining up some more of these podcast episodes, reactions, other industry related videos. I'm excited to get back into doing more content because, you know, I was supposed to just be getting home from tour right now, but The tour got canceled and, you know, silver lining is I got to be at home for an extra month with my wife and daughter and helping around the house and, you know, kind of just getting everything set up again. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked that I actually did get an extra month at home, even though a tour did get canceled for that. But on the other bright side of that, I've been able to go to a lot of shows at home. Uh, a couple that I just went to recently, about a month ago, I saw Sabaton and Epica at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. And for those of you not familiar with the Ryman, it is one of the oldest. Actually, I think it is the oldest music venue in Nashville, Tennessee. It was originally known as the, well, it is known as the Mother Church of Country Music, but it was the original Grand Ole Opry radio show location. So to see a show like Sabaton and Epica at that venue was really cool, man. And they had almost their full setup. They had the tanks on stage. They had the barbed wire setups. Like it was really awesome. And they actually invited me there early and I got to meet the band in person for the first time. And not only the band, their entire crew as well. And everybody in the crew and the band were so nice and so welcoming. And it was really just an awesome first Sabaton show experience. And I got to meet a couple of the members of Epica who were amazing as well. It was just a really, really cool, fun time. And then a couple of weeks ago, I actually went and saw the Pain Remains tour, which is Lorna Shore's current headlining tour. They've got support from Aborted, Ingested, Angel Maker, and of Sulphur, probably one of the most brutal top to bottom lineups I've seen on a tour in a while. And the show was fantastic. It was at the Brooklyn Bowl in Nashville, about, I think it's like 13 to 1400 capacity, fully sold out. Their whole tour is sold out. And man, there's just something about going to metal shows that I just love the community, the crowd, like everybody was great. I got to meet a lot of you guys that are listening on here and on YouTube. It was just awesome, dude. And I got to see a couple of the guys from Lorna Shore beforehand and say hi. And it's just really cool to see those bands doing those kinds of tours, you know? So I'm excited for more too. Uh, next month, we got Ginger coming to town with POD, Space of Variations and Malevolence. And then Parkway Drive just announced a tour. There's so many shows I'm going to soon, man. I just am loving going to live music shows right now. But going back to the tour cancellation, this episode is going to be very interesting because I was supposed to be on the Electric Callboy tour, and this is the first time I'm going to be talking to somebody in the band, like, for more than just exchanging text messages since that tour got canceled. I know a lot of people probably think because of YouTube and the podcasts and all that, like, I am really close to a lot of these bands, and full honesty, I'm really not. 
like, yeah, I exchange text messages and Instagram messages with the guys from Electric Cowboy sometimes, but we don't really know each other that well. So getting to sit down and talk with Kevin today is going to be very cool because again, it's the first time since the tour got canceled and they've got a lot going on, man. I mean, I know for this episode, he's in the studio with the rest of the guys. They're already working on new material and they just released their last album techno in September of this year. And holy shit, was that a great album from start to finish, man? I mean, I'm going to pull it up on my, my screen here really quick just to make sure, but the charts for this were insane. Yeah, here, number one in Germany, number three in Austria, number four in the UK, number six in Switzerland. And that's just the top tens, man. They charted in countries all over the world. And to see the progression of this band in the last couple of years has just been awesome, dude. Like super cool to see. And they're already working on new music, man. It's nuts. So, but you know what? I've got you guys up to speed with what's going on with me. So we're going to kick off this podcast episode or bring on our guest, Kevin, very shortly. But before we do that, just, you know, a couple standard announcements. Um, for those of you that don't know, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple or Google, you can watch the video versions of these on YouTube at youtube.com slash tank the tech. And I upload regularly. I've got reaction videos and breakdowns and reviews and music industry stuff and other podcast episodes. And then we also have a discord server that tons of people from all over the world hang on. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I'm all over social media. And if you want to support the channel in some kind of financial way, it's not required. Just know that I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen and watch. I do have a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash tank the tech. Any tier that's available will get you some bonus stuff. More specifically, both tiers you can get these episodes and my videos earlier than they actually get released. But like I said, that stuff helps me crank out content, but just know that I appreciate you guys just watching and listening, man. I legitimately love doing this. And as always, a big old shout out to Rode Microphones for helping me sound so good with all of this stuff. So without further ado, let's just, uh, let's just get Kevin on here and get going, man. So let's kick it off here. I believe this is episode 17 of this podcast now, but uh, let's welcome in Mr. Kevin Ratajczak. Oh, did, did you I get, even did, pronounced my name correctly. Right? Yeah, you did get it oh, right. Gee. Absolutely. And thank right. you for having me. Thanks, Thanks yeah, for having from me. It's the part I pleasure. didn't say from, from Electric Callboy, but I think everybody knows that at this point. So. <laughs> ah, come on. This is uh, very flattering, but but yeah, I'm doing vocals in Electric Callboy, and it's so good to talk to you. And uh, it, it, I'm still blown away by the fact that you did pronounce my name correctly. It's like even Germans have problems with that. Well, I, I if I remember right, when I did yeah. a video about you guys a while back, I, I asked you, and I yeah, remember, I, I remember that <laughs> now that you say that, I remember that. Yeah. I think I, I think I have like a WhatsApp voice message where you're like really slowly. You're like, it's, you're <gasps> yeah. like, it's like, it's like three syllables. It's like, ra tai chuck. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't tell that to the people because now it's like the magic is gone a little yeah. bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so okay. You, fine. Got, you got other guys in the band that I'm sure non-German speakers will probably mess up their names too. But, absolutely absolutely but that's the, not the, even... the mailman the mailman are the worst like, like yeah, yeah. yeah just... Mr. <laughs> but that's not that's not even a a normal german name right is that like polish background yeah something like that okay. uh i there was a time when i was interested in like ancestors uh, ancestors and 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 where this name comes from but when i found out that it, it's something like a good horseman or something <laughs> I quit. You know, I, I was I was all good, and I yeah. I, I left it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find I find the ancestry stuff really interesting, and especially yeah. since lately I've been into, you know, with this whole YouTube journey, and I'm like making so many friends in Europe and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and everybody always asks. So, uh, my wife and I both did those um, ancestry DNA tests, ah, and no way. And my family has done a very good job at keeping track of um, one part of our family. Like I have a family tree in my living room that dates okay. back to 1100 in England. Wow. Like, that is yeah. crazy. That but is I, really crazy. 
But we found out, I didn't even know, like, I have, like, Germanic roots that our family didn't even know about. Like, every the funny thing is, everybody told us our family was all, all, always uh, predominantly Irish. Okay. And then Irish wasn't even, like, the top three thing that came up in a DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm I'm honest with you. I couldn't tell because in Germany, uh, it's like because of all the wars that have been fought here, unfortunately, and uh, so many people move from one country to another, and and this is most probably why I have that uh, last name. Yeah. But I don't even have a connection to to. The, I can't speak Polish, for example. And at some point, I found out there has there has been an empire called. Uh, I don't know if you know Prussia, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know it. Um, and the name goes back to that time. So I'm, I'm absolutely wow. not aware. Yeah, I don't know. But, but my, 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 my grandfather, for example, he was born, born in France. But, but this is also a war thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. He, he was not particularly a, a French uh, man, but, but uh, yeah. I this feel is as crazy. though this is, this is a very American thing. Americans are really obsessed with, like, being able to tell somebody, like, you, know, you get it. You get it in certain parts of the country where somebody will find out that they're like an eighth Italian. They're like, yo, I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that from from American TV shows. And this is quite funny because uh, when it's called Ancestry or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Ancestry, you can, you can put your DNA in. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, when when people find out that they have some some origin in some other uh, cultural, you know, whatever, and they from that point they identify yes. as whatever you no know? they wear a certain clothes and yep. stuff and because i'm italian you know <laughs> and yeah i don't know it's it's very stereotypical stereotypical sometimes but but it's absolutely interesting to find out um yeah uh, yeah. yeah where it, where your ancestors are coming from and uh, yeah absolutely until you find out like something horrible about your family like oh, generations yes. ago oh, or yes. something. <laughs> oh yes. I, I'm watching I'm watching The Office right now. Yeah. Oh my I know where there, you're going with this. There is an episode <laughs> and I love I love the character of Michael Scott because he's so absolutely not correct in any way. <laughs> yeah. He tries to be he tries to be the nice guy, but he's always in the wrong position. But 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 I remember that particular uh, episode <laughs> yeah i know exactly what you're talking about and the funniest thing <laughs> is that i have a friend that mm-hmm. with this ancestry thing that kind of happened he got a dna test back and it came back that mm-hmm. he was like like two percent african-american but his whole family's white and he's like how do you think that happened and i was just like uh, uh ask your mom <laughs> and that's all i thought well that's all i thought about was that office episode where they were giving okay, ed helms's okay. character yeah. a hard time about it <laughs> But um, but anyways, man, man, you guys have had so much going. On. I feel like like me as an outsider looking at your guys's career right now, the last two years had to have been just insane for you guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. What should I say? It's just crazy. And, you know, when you're going with the flow, as I uh, tend to say, you, you don't even sometimes you don't even notice what's going on because everything's so fast and everything's just rushing by. Uh, just remembering uh, our hyper hyper tour then the festival season which was great also played so many great festivals big festivals and uh yeah and we came to a point where we uh don't even didn't even notice how much is going on like you you need to rest from time to time you need to to just uh, sit on your couch at home and see what was going on during summer and then i'm like wow and for example, when I, I was uh, I was having dinner um, outside at a restaurant with my family the other day, and there were uh, there was a guy walking by, and he was recognizing me and telling me like, "Yeah, I love your band." And this happens quite a lot the last weeks and months. This is also something where I can like see that something has happened, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but the the main problem, if there is a problem, the main problem is that the faster it goes the faster everything is rushing by the yeah the less sometimes you 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 can enjoy it you know like you yeah. can uh absolutely appreciate it sometimes you it's with food for example if you have fine food good quality food and you just like stuff it in your mouth you can you, you can't even tell what you're eating you know yeah. but you want to take a, a small bite and then yeah appreciate it taste it you know but uh 
This sounds so negative. I know. But, no, but, that's a uh, great analogy. And I do. Yeah. I understand what you're saying because even when I toured working for bands, mm -hmm. there I felt the same thing at times. Like I can look back at, you know, I worked for the same artist for five years before the pandemic. Oh, yeah. And there are times where I look back at that five years and I'm like, I, like, where did the time go? I feel like some of these things mm -hmm. were just yesterday. And then I feel like exactly. a, some of them were lifetimes ago. It's crazy. And, exactly. And you guys just don't stop. I mean, we, we constantly see, you know, just, you know, the cranking out of the music videos. And then you guys are constantly on tour and festivals. And even right now you said you guys are in the studio working and it's like, when do you take it's, time for yourself? Uh, to be honest, uh, due, uh, due to, uh, Nico being sick, we had some, some, some weeks off, like not really off because there is always something to do, mm -hmm. but, but it was a time where we, and it was absolutely sad for us, you know, uh, you know best about that situation. But thing is when we, uh, were at home and there was a day that I, uh, tidied up my, my, um, what's it called? Like where I put my clothes to, like. It's a room where my clothes are, Your like closet. A, a closet, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like just like folding T-shirts and stuff like that. And I, I noticed that I haven't done this for weeks and months, you know, like this, like very calmly folding shirts. And I was like, all the time, all the last weeks and months, I was just rushing. And I it was just like taking it from, from you know what I mean? And, yeah. um, and uh this is what shows me that it was good to rest a little bit, yes. but um, as you uh, yeah, as you noticed, it, 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 there was a lot of going on, and 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 I think um, it was very important. It was very important to I, how can I say? I I want to appreciate things, and mm -hmm. and and judging from a point of view that like every, every good things have an end at some point, and. I, I would be very sad if I uh, can't enjoy what's going on. And so even when I was on, on festivals and there were like sometimes week uh, weekends where we had like four or five fe festivals in a row and like, like took flights to another country and whatever. Um, I tried to like take my time every day and like, um, wow, this is cool. I'm thankful for that. And, and I, and I enjoyed that. And uh, talking about that, for example, uh, Jacoby Shaddix on Instagram, I didn't know if you saw it, like he's doing some, something similar, um, like he's writing down where he, he is, what he's thankful for. Yeah. And I think this is a, this is a good thing for what, for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, this that, is what we did. Jacoby's might actually come, and I don't know this, this is pure speculation, but if I remember right, I think mm -hmm. Jacoby is sober. I don't think he yeah, drinks I, anything. Yeah, that yeah is, exactly. And, and, and I am too. That's a... Uh, a gratitude list. That's a very big thing in the sober community that helps ah, people okay. when they wake okay. up in the morning, they write mm -hmm. what they're grateful for. And then at the end of the day, you write down what you're grateful for and stuff like that. And ah, cool. It's something that I do as well. And it's, it's, it, it keeps you very balanced. It keeps you in the moment and focused on things. And it's okay. It's Didn't know that, yeah. but in general, exactly. In general, I think this is a very good thing to do because mm -hmm. at the moment, and I don't know if it, if I'm the only one. And uh, there are so many wrong and bad things happening in the world. And mm -hmm. the older I get, uh, the more it seems. And um, for me, it's very, it's very, uh, yeah, it feels healthy for me to to uh, to not forget what's going on uh, good in the world and good yeah. in my life, you know. And the, those lists, for example, are things that I absolutely love to have because, yeah it i don't want to uh i don't want to be blind for all the problems you have yeah. to face them from time to time but it uh, you don't want to get depressive you know you don't want to uh, have too much negative power or ne negative vibes in, inside your body and and being thankful is a good way to to stay positive yeah i agree and i think i i think uh one thing you were talking about too is right now um especially with internet tv all that stuff it seems like Everybody just gets bombarded by negative news Absolutely. daily, all the time. Absolutely. Like, so it is great to see those those happy moments. And, you know, that's one of the things that I've loved about um, the music since discovering your band is like, mm -hmm. that's the one thing that is you, you commonly see, like whenever you guys put out a new music video or something, I see people that are like, 
man, I was having a terrible day and this song made my day. And that comes with a lot of different music, man. And it's a really cool thing. Like music is a, such a huge outlet for so many people. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I, I absolutely love to connect to people. And uh, sometimes there is not enough time to, to, uh, to lead proper uh, conversation with people. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, and of course I can have small talk, but uh, I, most of it all, I love to really connect to people. Like, not uh not only have superficial dialogue uh, dialogues you know what i mean like uh, really talking to people and um the thing that enjoy uh, that i'm enjoying the most when i get messages uh of people from people telling me yo you uh i had a hard time but your music helped me for example or uh, what as you said watching uh, your music videos helped me through a rough day or whatever mm -hmm. and this is to be honest, like, uh, we're always doing or we're always making music for ourselves in the first place, you know, like, because we love music and we love being creative. And sometimes it feels like, a, yeah, a therapy for ourselves. Like, uh, we, we, we are just like all the other people having bad days, you know, and, yeah. and making and creating the music helps us as much as uh, it helps the people out there watching our music. So it's 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 a win-win situation for us and uh the people out there uh enjoying our music so i love i love that fact yeah about i mean music. your music even helps more than just like my mood like our daughter so our daughter is almost two at this point already and uh, wow if she's going nuts in the house and just running around mm -hmm. i can turn on the music videos for spaceman yeah and, it, and it'll at this least this is a funny it, fact it'll at least get her attention for that like four minutes <laughs> My son is from all the songs. Uh, Spaceman is his song too. So uh, it's like uh, whenever he's in the in, in the car, uh, driving with the car, and he's uh, sitting in the bag, I'm, I'm I'm putting on Spaceman. It's like, yeah, yeah, dude, she's it's enjoying it. She does that too because she, uh, you know, she she's been walking for almost a year. She started walking early, but she does this thing where she bounces, oh. where she'll stand in front of the TV, yeah, yeah. and she'll just kind of baby bounce like that. <laughs> It's so funny. I dude. love that. This this uh, is a total daddy talk. But, yeah, but, I love uh, it. I, I absolutely enjoy it. And uh, <laughs> when I see when I see him uh, walking around, and you know the situation, you're coming back with a car, you're coming back with your with your kid and your wife from whatever family, or you're driving home, and it's very close to bedtime, and you don't want to. Uh, have your kid fall asleep in the car, yeah. during, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you try to to keep it awake. Like yeah. blah, 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 and you're talking shit about, uh, and you're talking uh, some crap, uh, whatever. <laughs> or, or I, I can always put on some music. Yeah, uh, this is a good, uh, a good show, a good solution for the that. The problem is there's no music that like, I, there's no, there's something about our daughter that with music, like it's kind of like with me too. If she gets into the zone in it. It'll put her mm -hmm. to sleep. There's been times where we've turned on like Lorna Shore or something in the car. And turn, <laughs> and we're like, this will keep her up. And then she gets into it. She'll get in the back seat and she'll just start making noises with the music. And then two minutes, <laughs> two minutes later, she'll be asleep and we'll be like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. You know. This doesn't work as planned, but yeah. I can totally feel it. So sometimes people telling me, oh, how can you, how can you listen to that kind of music? It's so aggressive. I, I know. Uh, my, for example, my wife, she's always like when I'm listening to to yeah hard music like Lorna Shaw or whatever, um, she's always like, oh, I'm getting so aggressive. <laughs> I can't listen to that shit. And I'm like, it's for me, it's the other way around. You know, it's yeah. like when when I listen to that kind of music, it's like so, it feels like somebody is screaming for me. It's some mm -hmm. somebody is there. Like the the music helps me, uh, like putting all uh, all that's not supposed yeah. to be in me like to the outside like releasing all the bad energy yeah absolutely a fan of that so i mean when i was working in country music um i would in my guitar world every day i had a big work box set up and i would always turn on music when i was working on guitars that was my i could focus and just turn something mm -hmm. on but i always turned on metal and yeah a lot of the people that tour in the country market there are actually a lot of metal heads that have jumped ship and they're all working in country now but mm -hmm. there are other people that are are very stereotypical country and they don't understand metal and they think it's angry. And I would have not only other roadies, but other band members would walk up to my guitar world. And mm -hmm. there's this country act from uh, Nashville called Little Big Town. Mm -hmm. And okay. they have, uh, 
they have a singer who is the the sweetest, nicest woman I've ever met in my entire life. And like every other day, she'd come up to me and put her hand on me and be like, sweetie, are you OK? You're always listening to this aggressive music. And I was like, this <laughs> this stuff makes me happy. It's like, yeah, yeah, believe it or not. I'm like, it's your music that makes me angry. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, but and even even with reaction videos, just for fun, I started wearing yeah. a heart rate monitor while I do the yeah. reactions. Yeah. And OK. There, there's been times where I've seen like it's like a breakdown comes on and you see and my like, heart rate level out. Yeah. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Same for me. Yeah. Thank we with same. Yeah. Uh, it's like whenever I'm uh, alone at home um, and, and for example, doing whole household things, you know, like cleaning up the room and uh, I, I listen to, to metal music as loud as I can because it, yeah. it keeps my mood up and my feelings like I'm, I'm, I'm balanced then, you know, like yeah. it, it feels like, uh, feels very natural and for example i i do love other kinds of music absolutely Same. i'm a music guy so uh, but uh, they yeah they they do something different with me you know when yeah. for example good country music i can i can i can feel good country music to be Same. honest like mm -hmm. there were times um they it's not their name anymore but but dixie chicks they used to be dixie chicks now the they chicks. are just the chicks yeah, yeah. i i love them I do like too. like uh, um uh, so many, I can't tell you the name. I don't know. So many song, songs that I used to listen to, and uh, but they they do something different with me. Like they make me sometimes they make me sad, and I can like I can be on my own when yeah. I listen to that kind of music, and 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 when I want to think about things, you know, this helps me. But yeah, metal is just yeah, it's just me, you know. It's my yeah. I listen to, for, I've, I, I, it's for me, my go-tos, I mean, is, is metal, but like mm -hmm. I I've been getting, because of all my new European friends, I've been getting into a lot of like EDM and like mm -hmm. the hard style stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very fascinated with the German hip hop scene right now. Oh yeah. Because okay. I always find, and I hope I'm not insulting anybody, but no, no, no. I always find that the music itself, like the beats mm -hmm. are phenomenal mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. like but then the vocals are just very underwhelming and cheesy sometimes. Mm, <laughs> like, absolutely. But the so beats are, all day. Yeah, this is as a as an American, you 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 maybe have problems like judging all that. But but I can tell you as a as a as a German, I can tell you that there are so many different qualities of German uh, hip hop and rap. Um, there is like this typical radio rap you know like they look they sound all the same sometimes um and as you say it's it's all about the beat you know mm -hmm. when when the beat hits hits that sweet spot and you like it then uh the vocals you can they can still mess it up but um it's harder to mess it up when the beat is good you know yeah and for example, uh, yeah, Finch that we worked uh, with. Um, love Finch. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I, I love his voice. He has this very rough and hard voice um, for his tracks. And, and, and he just re recently released a new track um, where he, where he uh, yeah, was more rapping again. You know, like mm -hmm. the, 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 the whole song, the, all the songs that he did before uh, the last release were very hardcore gaba with yeah. us a metal song you know but the real rap uh, music uh, he did again with his last uh, release and i'm a big fan of that absolutely yeah i mean uh abfot is on my playlist like that comes oh, out yes, all the yeah. time like that one yeah. that beat and that goes so hard like, absolutely, another, absolutely and i don't know where they are in the spectrum of german hip hop and rap but mm -hmm. uh Deichkind is another oh, yeah. that i really very like very cool yeah they yeah, I used to love them when, when you know, like, like they they got famous at some point, and then yeah. they they kind of change, and and it's always the situation like when you're on the radio, you have to yep. kind of fit in sometimes, and yeah, this is what we are I confronted with as well. So, yeah. but but Daichkin was really rap, real rap music when they started, and then they. Yeah, then they turned into that party rap 
yeah. whatever you want to call it, yeah. which is still cool. They had one of their biggest songs is um, they, for example, they had a song called Bon Voyage. Yeah, I know that song. Uh, yeah, exactly. This was on the album that was still real rap music, I would say. And then with uh, um, hey guys, what what is the, the song Daishkind here party song? Demi Demi, exactly. <laughs> this is like, yeah, this is the party song. When you play that song on a on on, on a party, this is the one uh, yeah. that everybody loves. And this kind of music they they are doing now, or they did for quite a long time, and it was very very successful. So, I mean, yeah. that's that's something that happens a lot with with a lot of different bands and music. And admittedly, there are some bands for me where it's like. I will fully admit it's like for my personal taste, it's like, yeah, I like their old stuff better. And I know mm -hmm. that sounds like mm -hmm. such an elitist comment, but no, fans no. change. Yeah. Uh, they do change. And for me, it's very important to know why they change. Mm -hmm. Is it because they want to change or they feel the need to change, you know, because it's more mainstream or they can reach more people, whatever. Uh, for us, we've been always changing, but, but for the sake of, new music you know we we, yeah. we don't want to get bored of our own music this is why we change this is why we try out schlager music or whatever <laughs> but you know but the thing is the thing is uh, it's all about the credi uh, credibility and the authenticity because if you as a uh, as a musician uh if you love what you're doing you can transfer that feeling to the people mm -hmm. but if you're just a soulless musician doing what your label tells you to do come on it's yeah. like it might be it might be successful because there are a lot of people working on it to, to be to su successful they're penetrating the radio stations and whatever if there's a lot of money going into that it might be even successful even if the musician is isn't into it anymore but i can't just i can't feel this kind of music anymore yeah and and as you say uh, people uh, or musicians change. Yeah, it, it, it was right what, what I was saying. People, they are not musicians; they are humans, and mm -hmm. they don't they don't feel the same every day they wake up. So, uh, why should the music be always the same? And uh, yeah, but but it's it's for me it's always important. As you say, I can like old music of a band and say, oh, the new new stuff is not my my taste, my not my cup of tea, but. Uh, Come on, I'm, I'm I'm happy if they are. You know, I don't yeah. need to to listen to their music anymore, and yeah. I I keep listening to the old stuff. Then, yeah, and that's like a big a big discussion I've been having with a lot of people lately is like when people don't like music, it's easy for them to say this sucks or this is mm. bad. But I'm like, mm. here's the thing: you gotta separate your own personal feeling and your preferences from music because. You can music is so subjective that mm -hmm. if you don't like something and you saying this sucks, I, I just think yeah. that's such a horrible statement because yeah. there are tons of other people that will like this. And, yeah. you know, you can objectively look at something and be like, does it sound good? Is it well written? You know, is the production value good? So there are things I hear where, yeah, sure, maybe for my personal taste, I don't like it, but it's like I can't fairly say this yeah. sucks like you know what you I mean? know yeah absolutely know what you mean but uh the internet is so simple sometimes and the people <laughs> don't the, the 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 people don't think too much you know yeah. um and it's even easier to be an asshole when you're uh when you're yeah when you don't stand for for the comments with your yeah. real name yeah or if you don't say it into uh, someone else's face yeah but the thing is and i usually there were, there were times when I read more YouTube comments, but as they got more and more, and as I'm very easily, I'm very sent. Uh, what is it called? Like I'm very sense sensitive. S sensitive. Uh, yeah, yeah, sensitive with the comments, and when people are being mean, I'm a big guy, but I'm still like, oh, sometimes it hurts my feeling when they're too, too, too. Sure. Uh, and I, I, I don't, I don't even want to sound. Like an idiot now, but then I I'm staying away from the comments. You know that's yeah. what I wanted to say. But uh, when I read one of those mean comments, and it's it's all about like someone can not like our music, but I always uh, I'm always very offended if they don't respect our music as a form yes. of art. And Usually I don't uh, I don't answer comments, but there was one time, for example, when I when it was enough for me, when someone 
was like i can't tell you what, what is what it was uh i can't quote it but yeah it was something like um this is this is not uh, this is um uh very poorly done music something like that very easy done music there's mm -hmm. not much work going into that and this was a point that I, i when i read that comment i saw myself like not seeing my family being in the studio for weeks and uh, like working 24/7 felt felt like working 24/7 and then there is this person telling me that yeah. uh i was losing my shit at that point i was like You can you can hate you can you can call our music shit, uh, but but please respect that we put a lot of work into this and uh, I, I I remember it was like they didn't earn it or something. Yeah, we we yeah. didn't earn we didn't earn uh, the success or something, and I was like you can you can uh, not like our music, but please uh, we worked hard for that, and to tell me we we didn't earn it is just wrong well you know? i've seen That's... people and it's not just you guys there are other bands that have blown up over the pandemic the last couple of years too and you see a lot of people try and discredit that and they say they had overnight success and i've seen people mm. say that you guys just all of a sudden had overnight success and got big mm. and i was like how about the 10 years that they've been constantly yeah. touring and yeah. doing stuff before this even happened yeah, yeah. you know And it's something that I realized over the last years or the last two, three years. Um, we've been constantly working, but it never, it never really took off. We, we like, we got popular, more, more and more popular, of course. And, and we played bigger and bigger shows to take this as an, yeah, as a, as a, um, a quantity for success. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm searching for like getting, getting more successful and, But the thing is, um, you can work and work and work, but but it's like the the experience that you get that you get over the years is very very important, and you see that when when people um, when people have a um, something like a hype, and they get popular too fast, mm -hmm. sometimes they can't cope with that. You know, sometimes sure. they they start to to act like assholes and. Um, I I always um, um, I always connect fame to 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 money in my head. It's like the same when people they start from the bottom and they earn money and they earn more money and they are successful and at some point they have a lot of money. Mo most of the time, these people know how to they they know where they're coming from and uh, they they are still still most of the time they are still the people. But if you like win in the lottery. Sometimes yeah. these people can't deal with it and they like trash their whole lives because they can't like, yeah, yeah. they just know how to, to act anymore. Yeah. There's, there's a thing in, in the United States with the, with the lottery, there was a, a book that uh, like a researcher uh, put out mm -hmm. where he said like it was upwards of like 90% or 95% of the people that have won. I'm pulling this stat out of my ass. I will fully admit, yeah, I don't sure, know if sure, that yeah. was the exact number, but <laughs> it was a very large number of people that won like, the big mega millions jackpot in the U S yeah. went broke within like three years. And it's exactly. because they don't know how to handle themselves and they go crazy exactly. and they spend money and they go nuts. And like, exactly. You know, it's, I always joke. I always kind of have this mentality with like, even being a roadie working for bands. Mm -hmm. I've been on tours where, you know, some, a roadies first tour is they're young And it's like mm -hmm. an arena tour. They somehow get a tour mm -hmm. with a band in an arena and you can mm -hmm. kind of see they act like they're like, you know, big time and all this. And exactly. We kind of sometimes I've, I've seen those people get checked because I've always joked that anybody in the music industry that tours mm -hmm. should absolutely have to do like a van and trailer tour for like a year before absolutely. they do anything else because they're going to learn how yeah. to grind it out, how to live yeah. below their means. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same for the bands, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in, in times of, and I don't want to sound too old, but uh, like the whole, this whole internet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is like um, for the younger generation that is starting music now or has been starting music yeah. five years ago or something, They see all the glitter and the glamorous bands, mm -hmm. and they 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 can 
act like them, you know, they can like dress like them and with their fucking iPhones, they can take videos and photos just like them yeah. because everybody has Photoshop on their, on their MacBooks. But thing is, um, there's something more behind it. And sometimes these younger generation, they, they have, they kind of get a feeling that when they start playing shows, it's, they start at, at the, at the wrong standard, you know, yeah. like, I remember times where we played for a crate of beer and we had like to pay money totally. and stuff like that, yeah. you know? And I don't, I don't even want to uh, say that you don't necessarily uh, uh, can earn money from, from playing, playing shows. This is a completely different uh, discussion. But the uh, thing is, I remember when we were searching for um, um, a support band. It's it's some years ago, but we we worked our way to somewhere, and then we were in the position to uh, search for a support band. And these guys, I can't even, even remember the name, but but doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, uh, they they haven't been around for too long. They had never played a tour, never played any shows, and. It was a new band. They were absolute rookies. Yeah. And they we asked them to be our support and they were like, "Yeah, we want to have that." And this is our catering rider and this is our <laughs> technical rider and and of course they they should have food and they should have their technical yeah. stuff, but it was like I was like, wow, when I started, I, I was happy when there was water in the crate of beer yeah. and I had like a tiny spot on the stage to play. Uh, but th this is just wrong. And I think as you say, you need to start from the bottom to appreciate all that and to like handle it yeah. correctly. Well, I, I think the problem too is with, with the younger generation. And I, I, it sounds so funny saying that because I think yes, we're both in like, we're both, yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> we're both in like our mid thirties and we've been doing yeah, this since yeah, yeah. like, but I look at, uh, you know, some of the, some of the bands that are in their early twenties and stuff, and you can see it because they, they, they see the, the glamour of the music industry and they see the arena bands that do have the full catering and the tour buses and all this stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and they think that that's just how it is. But the exactly. reality is, you know, when you first start, like I'll give you a good, a good uh, example of this. So when my band was super young, um i mean dude we we've played shows to sound engineers before and that's it like nobody mm -hmm. in the room but we used to be happy when we just got like water and alcohol like at a show so we did a tour with um a small tour with a day to remember right when they were getting big mm -hmm. like wow, like so okay, this was like crazy. 2007 okay and crazy yeah the first show we showed up at we they're like oh you guys get a dressing room we're like we get a dressing room and, <laughs> and we we walk into the dressing room and there's there's a, a case of water like a 12 pack of coke a case of beer and a loaf of bread and peanut butter and jelly and we were like holy shit wow. we're like we get we get all of this like this is amazing like, we had we don't even have to share it man this is crazy yeah and now yeah. 20 20 years later i find myself on tours where i'm like i walk into catering and breakfast isn't ready yet and i'm just like what the fuck yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 exactly and catering is the one thing that i use to to uh ground myself like to is it ground no like to to put everything into perspective again because yeah yeah um I remember all the good times. Uh, I remember all the times when uh, when I was very happy to have yeah the the the, the loaf of bread with peanut butter and jelly, uh, and now we have like all that. Yep. And sometimes I I find myself like oh they don't have my special special water you <laughs> yeah. know it's okay but. I would have preferred my special water, yeah, and yeah. this is like then it, it's like in my head, no, Kevin, you're you're being. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't. Um, I'm not, uh, um, I'm not um, mad at people or something. You know, yeah. don't get me wrong, but just the thoughts, just yeah. like having those thoughts in your head is is simply wrong. And uh, yeah, of course, it's something different now, but but yes, yeah, so I, I I love to remember all the. The times when it's, it was not normal to have dude, a whole catering. Reminiscing about the old old touring days is so fun sometimes because you do realize you you look back and you realize, you know, 
the first I did a video recently where I was talking about how how much you could potentially make like working for bands as a roadie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I look back on my first tour ever and my my first tour uh, being being a roadie, not being in a band. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My first pay I ever got as a roadie was seventy five dollars per show day. Not mm-hmm. every day, just show days. Yeah. No per diems, no nothing. But at the time, oh. it, it's it sounds like nothing now. But at the time, yeah, but I was I was a twenty year old kid that was exactly. living broke out of a van with a band for three years, and I was like, yeah, seventy five dollars per day. Exactly. I was like, you exactly. know how much shit I could buy with seventy five dollars a day? Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. So. And you're like, you're on tour, and you you add it up, and you say, wow, this is not too bad. I can deal with it, yeah. and I can deal with it, especially when I think about the fact that I'm doing what I love. You know, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is this is what makes you do things for less money, may, maybe. And thing is, when we started the band, it was like we had to pay on top. We didn't earn yep. money. We had to pay on top yep. for a long time. And you you only do that if you into something, if you have a passion for something. And uh, yeah, but the one thing that I can say from my perspective now is. Uh, there always have been things uh, about like stars that I saw and that I was fan of that I didn't understand. For example, like I went to some shows when I was younger and then I saw like uh, after the show, uh, I saw the singer like leaving and not giving into uh, autographs and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, this is maybe an asshole, mm. you know, like he's very arrogant. And um, I've, um, yeah, we had like some, some, some many stations on our way already. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the older I grow and the, the, the more successful the band gets, I, I can more and more understand what is going on, um, uh, within the lines of the band within yeah. like, because sometimes you don't see the whole situation of a musician, you know, uh, for example, that this musician definitely is doing a tour and is uh like doing this every day and is not in the mood every day you know yeah. like he's just a human and i can totally understand because my younger me uh, didn't understand that you know I, it's just coming out and giving me an autograph and yeah. a photo or whatever but is sometimes uh you don't see like the reality of the musician on stage you know and uh this is something that i learned uh yeah from my own experiences and now I, I can for example i frank from my now from my perspective now we had a show with um uh with uh, 30 seconds to mars oh okay and uh, they are like huge this is like there are the metal bands and the 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 successful bands that we have been on 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 this festival and then there were like 30 seconds to mars and usually you don't see those band members on the festival side or in the backstage area. They are in a hotel somewhere and then they mm-hmm. are being shuttled to the stage. But when uh, Derek Leto, uh, Leto um, arrived, we were told to, to, to put our phones away, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I absolutely re- remember that I was like, why? Why the fuck should I put my phone away? And I, I thought, what an arrogant guy, you know? Yeah. But then I like then I thought, how many people must have been there t- that have taken photos of him in secretly? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He he can't tell anybody uh, on the uh, on the backstage area like to not photograph, take photos of him. But just thinking, just being, um, yeah, you you get paranoid. Like when you have to fear anybody on uh, in the backstage yeah. area, even in a backstage area, to take photos of you secretly. It feels like uh, there are a thousand eyes on you, yeah. you know, and this is not a comfortable feeling. This is not a comfortable situation for you in your living room in the backstage area. And yeah. from that perspective, again, I can understand it in some ways, you know, although it might seem arrogant in the first place, you know, but these are the situations that I there's a about. reason Some, something happened that causes that to have to be a thing. Like I've been exactly. on tours, I've been on tours where if, uh, you know, the artist I was working for was going to have guests or they, you know, mm-hmm. like bring somebody on the bus after the show. The tour manager literally had like a lockbox where he's like, if you come on the bus, you have to put your phone mm-hmm. in the lockbox. 
Like exactly. And there's, exactly. there's a reason for that. <laughs> like, you know, exactly. And yeah. Some people may think that those rules are dumb and there are, I will admit there are times where even in my working, I've seen artists do things where I was like, wow, what a dickhead. And then, yeah, I, exactly. I, and then I think about it later and I'm like, mm. okay, there's, there's a reason for this. Something's happened, you know? And, and I, um, I, and I can all, I always, I can only tell it from, from my perspective where I'm not fucking Jared Leto, you know what I mean? But <laughs> even, even, even I start to, to sometimes be in a position where I like, when there are too many eyes on me, when I'm not on stage, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm getting shy and I'm feeling like it feels not comfortable anymore. Yeah. This, this is just my very personal feeling, but it just doesn't feel comfortable anymore. Yes. And so if I like put it up a thousand times and uh, be in the position of Jared Leto, I can sometimes I can totally yeah. understand why uh, like, people are acting like that. You know, I'm, I'm not comfortable in a lot of social situations either. And one thing that started happening to me, and this is, this is bizarre. I'm not used to this. Um, mm -hmm. Because the YouTube channel has gotten a little bit popular and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I went to a show recently and yeah. or here, actually I'll give you the, the one that blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I went and saw Sabaton about three or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And when the doors for the show opened, I was like, I'm going to go look at merch and I'm going to go mm -hmm. just kind of walk around. I could not walk five feet without somebody recognizing me from YouTube because I've had interviews with them and I've done their videos and stuff where their fans probably knew I was going to be at that show and it got to a point where it's not that I didn't enjoy it. Like, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Everybody enjoys yeah. that. But yeah, sure. But I'm not used to it. And mm -hmm. it was I didn't know how to kind of handle it after a while. And there was one moment where I, I remember I I, wa I walked backstage and I went to the, one of the dressing rooms and I just like sat yeah. for a second. One of their crew guys was like, yeah, all right. And I was like, this is weird. And I kind of yeah. explained what was happening. I was like, this is this. I'm not used to this because exactly. I still feel like just a normal regular person same yeah and i just i mean it's cool but it's i don't know how to put it into words accurately it's just, I, I, I totally feel you it, i yeah. totally feel you because this is exactly what i what i'm feeling and um if you if i'm I, i'm very i'm the same person on stage and off stage i would say people that know me yeah of course i'm being like that when i'm on stage and i'm a little bit like more quiet when I'm off stage, yeah. but still I'm, I'm, I'm Leo, you know, but, but thing is, um, if, if I'm with my friends, for example, and I, I, I remember the time when I was at a local festival with my friends and then of course some people recognized me and they, they were very polite and I'm also trying to be very polite. Of course, when they ask me for a photo or something, I, of course they, they, they should have a photo with me or I give them a signature, but thing is, uh, throughout the whole festival that I was supposed to be with my friends, I couldn't be comfortable with my friends because there were always people around. Yeah. And it's not about the people. I can't blame the people. It's absolutely, they they see me, they tell me things, and I love to talk to people. But in this situation, I wanted to be with my friends, you know? Yeah, and I this get is, it. And this is qu quite hard to, to like, I don't want to, what is it called, like when you... Um, uh, in Germany, it's for uh, von Kopfstoßen to push someone against the head, uh, like uh, mentally. Like when you tell them, for example, "Oh, I want to be with my friends now. Could you please leave?" Yeah, you kind of just know? blow them off, like yeah. Yeah, but but it might be not polite, and I don't want to be yeah. not polite, you know. So this is what brings me in some some. Uh, yeah, you know what you know what you have to. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this from experience dealing with other artists. Mm hmm. If you ever have a hard time with that, I think what has helped other people I've toured with is that while it might be weird in that moment for you, like if you're out with friends or something like that, mm -hmm. just imagine that person that came up to you, you probably just made their day and gave them a story they're going to be telling exactly. for, for a exactly. very long time. Yeah. I like, know. It, it's just the nature of what it is. And it's like the funniest part for me was, um, you know, we haven't really gotten into this, but the U S tour that got canceled. Um, yeah. Most everybody knows I was supposed to be out there with you guys in tech mm -hmm. and work. And I was getting so many emails and comments where people are like, are you going to do the meet and greet with them so we can meet you? And I was like, I'm working for these guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. But you, but you, yeah, this is like, this is a very, um, 
a special situation because uh, of course you're a professional uh tech this is why yeah. you're tank the tech but but you're still doing your youtube which yeah. makes you make which makes you a creative working person as well so yeah. you you serve both sides of the of uh Same, yeah, it's, the same business. It, it is interesting. Like, yeah, it's like in my head, it's like, cause I even told, um, you know, you, your manager, when I first talked to him about working for you guys, I'm like, I just want you to know, like, yes, while I am doing this YouTube stuff and stuff like that, like I take my job on the road very seriously. And I could, yeah. I'm confident in saying anybody that's ever toured with me could tell you that. Yeah. And I was like, so when I'm out there, my first, first and foremost, I am guitar tech. Like, exactly. if there are other things that come up with it, with YouTube and stuff like that, that's cool. But like, mm -hmm. I'm not out there to be tank the YouTuber. I'm out there to be tank yeah. the guitar tech. And, um, you know, there has to be some kind of separation with that. And that's what I tried to explain to people is like, guys, mm -hmm. I, I would love to meet all of you guys when I can, mm -hmm. but when I'm out there, I'm working for them. I'm not out there to be the YouTuber that you guys see. I'm yeah, saying. it takes a lot of organization, but 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 the, there's time for for both sides, you know. Yeah, like yeah. when you're on tour, you have your job. And thing is, when you when you uh, get more and more popular, <laughs> this is funny because um, you can can um, you can uh, prepare your own guitar for your own feature on stage because you're popular and you're featuring a song or something. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like this might be very funny. Um, You uh, do you still make music in your own band? I don't know that. No, I haven't played in a band forever, but I mean, I still play. Like, I've got an electronic drum kit. I've got my basses. Mm -hmm. Like, I can. So yeah, featuring uh, this is like uh, featuring a live featuring uh, with Tank the Tech on stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfect, and and it would have it would have happened. I, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure, definitely. I was I actually But, no joke. I can mm -hmm. I can uh, sing all of Kelly's part for uh, Castro Spandau. Ah, oh, no way! Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're invited, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in the background. We're working. We're working. Definitely working because uh, this whole situation about the cancel uh, cancellation of the uh, of the tour. It was like I I told it before, but it was like we were so looking forward to that tour and first yeah. the festival and then the whole tour. It was like and and even. Uh, the the uh, the organization or the scheduling for the next year was already going on so we had yeah. like our now our job is to find proper places for a new tour in the US which we are still uh, very very happy to do at some point but but uh, now it's it's a working theme for ex for us yeah. at the moment but this is uh, going to happen i see that happen yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be, be funny i've i've dude i'm on i'm on like 160 day duolingo streak for german right now i'm getting there dude like i've still been practicing german like non-stop hey i'm not kidding you told me that you're like familiar with german and mm -hmm. you like some words and you're still learning and there is a story of an uh, a guy from the army from from uh, from the us and he was uh in germany for for uh he, his base was in germany and um, I met them like over 10 years ago and he obviously was a, a, an American soldier. And then uh, they came to shows because we got to know them at one of our shows. And then they came all over again and again and again. And at some, uh, at some show, uh, he told me, oh, I met this girl today. And at, at the next show, uh, he told me, oh, I'm here with the girl. Do you remember her? We are now, we're dating, we're together. And the next show, he was like, "Oh, did I tell you I'm staying in Germany?" <laughs> and and now they they are married, happily married, wow. and they have two kids. And he's in Germany. And this is what I wanted to tell you: he he wasn't able to 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 speak any German when he was when I met him the first time. At and uh, the last time I talked to him, he fluently and very well spoke German to me. Wow! And this was such an incredible feeling to know. Uh, his name is Ryan. Uh, uh, when I uh, heard Ryan or spoke to him the first time, like over ten years ago, and now I'm I'm I'm, I'm speaking to him in German is very funny. Yeah. Very funny. I mean, I'm I'm to the point where I I haven't had a lot of verbal practice, so mm -hmm. I'm really good at reading and writing. Like if I'm online, I'm awesome. Mm -hmm. So well, if you're on stage with us, you need to talk to, uh, with us. So if uh, in, on stage, when you're on tour with us, yeah. we can like, normally we, uh, it's always 
only allowed to to speak English on the bus because we don't want close people out. But yeah. it's only allowed to speak German when you're. Yeah, with well, us. I've been told by a lot of other Germans I know that even if I learn German, I'm gonna have a hard time with you guys because you all speak in slang. <laughs> yeah, it's. I, how can I? It's we still speak recognizable, yeah. like it's still German, but we tend to. Um, yeah, it's not. I'm going to. It's I'm gonna. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this that's... is the kind of abbrevi abbreviation we do. Yeah, and that's the same as in the U.S. Like, I would find it somebody learning English would be so difficult because how many dialects and slang there are in the U.S. There's parts of the U.S. Mm -hmm. that I go to where somebody talks and I'm like, what the fuck did <laughs> same, you just say? <laughs> yeah, same for you, for me uh, with the German accent. But the funny thing is, um, or oh, this is some something that is very hard for me as a non-native speaker um, when I'm uh, writing new lyrics because I want to adapt to some sense of humor. And yeah. sometimes I, sometimes even people, I see it, sometimes do uh, uh, grammar falls on purpose because it fits to the lyrical theme or yeah. to the rhymes or whatever. But those mistakes are only allowed to a certain extent, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I can measure up if I'm allowed in the situation that I have been in, you know, like uh, I want to do a, gram a grammar fall or a grammar mistake at this point, but then I'm not sure, is it allowed here or would it be too stupid, you know? Yeah. So this is a very, this is a problem that I'm dealing with when I'm writing uh, English uh, lyric, for example, yeah. just well, by I the mean, way. I mean, even if you read through your lyrics, I mean, your guys' stuff. I remember you asked me a question about something that you were mm. writing uh, on your last album. Exactly. And, I was like, you could, you, you said, do I say it in English this way or this way? And I was like, you could yeah. do either or, and nobody would ever think about it because that's how yeah. different people speak. But so you guys right now are busy in the studio and I want to get you wrapped up here, but before you go, I definitely, I feel like I should d ask, um, mm -hmm. how, how is Nico doing now? Is he doing any better? He's doing ex at the moment. He's doing better. So the last time we, we talk daily and the thing is, um, the last time he re kind of recovered, it was like uh, he was okay. And then he directly started to, to sing again on festivals because we were forced to. Um, and it got worse and worse after mm -hmm. just two days. And now um, the, uh, what's it called? The infection is gone. Okay. He was at the doctor's last week. So his infection is gone. He's doing great. And his voice is doing great. And we're starting to, to rehearse very soon. And, um, yeah, at the moment he has some other problems or not problems. He uh he's waiting for his first child. So No way. Uh, <laughs> as as we're talking, as we're talking, they run um the street up and down to make the uh, the birth uh, or the um, Oh uh, my the call, god. Like, to make the whole thing start, you Yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. dude. This is situation. But he's doing great. He's yeah. uh he he uh rests a lot and um um he feels great. So yeah. we can um we can yeah. Don't you in guys Germany have we shows in like a week mm. or two weeks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we 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 rehearsed without him and uh we closed him out for a time to to give him the space to heal but uh like in two weeks we're starting the uh, we had like five shows six shows i'm not sure at this point i'm I just saw, a it's the uk and... ones right exactly yeah. exactly the new dates for the uk one and uh he's good he's doing good, he, good. he he's uh capable of singing and um absolutely amazing so yeah. so he's fine but but at the moment he's like all, all that's in his head is uh, his child, you know. Yo, I'm trust me. I I remember that like that final week before my wife had our daughter. I remember how it's stressful. Mm. The whole time you're both just like, when's it gonna happen? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, For my son, I remember it's like uh, he was no, he was not overdue, but but it was like two days before the this date. Yeah. Um, it was like. I we went uh, like for a walk and drove with the car, and then we went home because we uh, we thought nothing would happen. And then I started off the PlayStation, and as I <laughs> started my game, it was like, Pitch! oh, I, I think something happened inside me. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, the same yeah. thing happened to us. We got into we Claire was like three or four days late, and uh, mm -hmm. we uh, I remember one night 
it was almost like midnight or 1 a.m. And yeah. I was like, well, might as well just go to bed. And right when we got in bed, she's yeah. like, yeah, I think it's time. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> But, um, you're all darling one more, one more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm comfortable right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that's how it is yeah. in the mornings now it's like we take turns waking up in the morning with with our daughter yeah. and, and like this morning she was she's yeah. like she's like nudging me and she's like she's awake and i'm like just give me another minute, yeah. <laughs> another minute. <laughs> oh yeah at the moment uh, every every child in the kindergarten is sick so oh. we we have our our son at home and i uh, from the bottom of my heart, I love that child, but I, I was starting to love the four, five hours that he's been to the kindergarten because I could deal with stuff at home, you know? I, I relate, I could, like, dude. Yeah. do my household. This is right nothing now, to do with the love for our own child, but... Yeah, right now, that's our nap time. Our, our, like, two and a half hours of nap that she takes in the afternoon, that's, like, the yeah. second she goes down, Claire and I are both just like, yeah. all right, what can we do right now? Exactly, like, exactly. Build a new garden or something. You you do big projects when the child uh, when the children are yeah. sleeping. <laughs> I built a gym in my garage the other day. Yeah. <laughs> like because we can't get to the gym anymore you know yeah but this but, is cool i i want to do something like that i'm to be honest i'm very unhealthy so i'm i'm, I'm i gained some pounds and i want to get rid of that and yeah. tour is doing a thing with me this for sure but but uh yeah like having a cycle like this yeah. this uh something like that or some weights in in, in the garage it's a perfect thing yeah i mean and it's it, dude even being on tour like I was so used to being on tour all the time. And when we hit the pandemic and then the kid, I wasn't able to work out. I did mm -hmm. my first full workout in like two years yesterday, like lifting and wow. everything. Dude, I'm so sore right now. I feel like I yeah. get hit by a car. <laughs> Can, like, you, can you move your arms? It's like, I, I hate I can, it. I can, Sometimes I, I can't can, sleep. I can, like, it's right here in my oh, chest. feels like it's going to explode. Like <laughs> this yeah. is the reason why I never start uh, start uh, doing that shit again, you know, yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm so afraid of the pain. Yeah. But you have to do it. Well, Getting older, you need to do it. Yeah, for sure. So, like I said, I know you guys are in the studio and you're busy, mm -hmm. but I was looking at your schedule a second ago, man, and it's crazy. You got UK coming up. You guys are going to mm -hmm. Australia. You guys. That first has, time. Oh, that's your first time in Australia? Yeah, first time. And it was always uh, on our bucket list. And uh, I'm trying to not to not be, uh, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to not be killed by an animal poisonous or venomous animal nah, you'll be okay just watch out for yeah. uh what the the one thing about australia that that weirded me out and i've been there multiple times now okay yeah cool. they say there's venomous snakes everywhere and stuff but i've never seen one while i was there but the one thing that freaked me out was the first time we ever went to a hotel the hotel staff the lady at the front she was like oh you know when you're in your room just be aware it is huntsman season so check in your shoes and under your bed Aww. before you get in bed and i was like what the fuck does that mean She's like, oh, you're not familiar? Oh, we have these spiders mm. called huntsman spiders. Mm. They're literally. I know that. Yeah. Dude. She's like, so mm. just check in your shoes and under your sheets before you get in bed because they're not venomous. But mm. if they've nested, they're very aggressive. And I'm like, my mm. worst fucking nightmare, dude. I hate spiders. Mm. Like a spider bigger yeah. than my face. Like, <laughs> but I never saw one. I, I never. So, yeah. To be honest, I don't hate spiders. I'm very interested in all, interested in all, all that. I've yeah. been to Costa Rica, for example, and I was always uh, searching for uh, tarantulas and stuff like that. But um, yeah, still afraid. You know, I'm yeah, still yeah. Uh, yeah I'm I have um, yeah a proper respect for all these animals. Yeah. Um, but this uh, keep, keep um, um, helps me stay alive, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, be be safe down there, and also it's starting to get. Um, I think they're in about spring right now. They're getting into summer, so it gets it gets pretty hot. So you know, yeah. drink lots of water because I had an issue with that when I was there when we were doing oh. festivals. Yeah, um, it's gonna be crazy, crazy time. Festivals yeah. and two two uh, headlining shows, and uh, yeah, okay. gonna see the beach for the first time. Yeah, in, in Australia, it's crazy. Nice. I'm, I'm very I'm very looking forward. Very much. Yeah, that'll be great. That. And then and then you come back, you get a little rest, and then what what I I think your biggest headlining tour ever, the techno tour, ever. right? Absolutely yeah. ever. Yeah, and we have so many plans that we couldn't announce so far, but there are, and um, we're working on the US, and uh, there are so many things going on, and I can't wait to announce all yeah. that. So that'll be um, awesome. And and we're we're already writing new music for a new album. So and, and new corporation. Yeah. <laughs> Never rest, always, yeah. always uh, going on and doing new stuff. Well, before I let you guys get back to work, is there, mm -hmm. um, is there any good way that uh, during this time and coming up and stuff that uh, you would suggest your fans could help support you guys or support the music? 
Um, keep listening to our music. Like, uh, it was such a pleasure to see how uh, our new album Techno is appreciated by you guys out there. And um, yeah, this is the best they can do. And if they like what they what they listening to, come to the shows. These are the two things, but I'm I'm always very humble. I, I I'm I'm very uh, I'm very much appreciating uh, that we're in the position to play those shows and and uh, do what we love for for a living. And uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to say to the people. Awesome, dude. Well, dude, this was great to finally sit down and talk to you again and have a quick conversation. And hope you guys a pleasure, have a great, thing. yeah. I hope you guys have a great time in the studio and. Uh, Man, be safe at the shows. Have a good time, and maybe, uh, bef but hopefully, before you get back to the U.S., we'll just have you on again, and we can talk about Australia. Oh, and absolutely, the techno tour absolutely. And everything. When we get new dates, when we get new dates for the U.S., we have to have a date where we talk about preparation for the tour, yeah. technical wise and also party wise. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you know, you maybe know all the good good things to do Dude, in the U.S. I I could show you guys a good time. Like it'll Perfect. be, it'll be a blast. So Perfect. Well, ha have a wonderful rest of your evening and I'll talk to you very soon, man. Thank you for your time. Thank, thanks for having me and talk to you soon. Take care. See ya. Bye. Well, from myself and on behalf of everybody else listening, thank you very, very much. One more time to Kevin of electric cowboy. What a guy, what a dude. I love these conversations. Like, I think when we got three quarters of the way through this, I finally realized, like, I haven't really asked him about the band. <laughs> like, we were just talking about anything and everything that came up. But that's the reason I love this, man. I love when we can just sit down and it feels like catching up with a friend rather than, you know, your typical, you know, sit down Q&A kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just so many other media outlets do that. So when I do this content, I want to make something that I feel like I would enjoy. And I enjoy the normal conversations. I like to get to know these artists as people, um, you know, cause you can go anywhere online and find all these questions and answers about these bands. So, you know, but where else are you going to hear, uh, you know, me and him talk about our ancestry and, uh, you know, what kind of music we're trying to play for our kids to not make them sleep and stuff like that. But, Again, this is great, man. And I'm just so excited for these guys with everything going on. And like, I I'm blown away. They're working on a new album already. I mean, they just don't stop at all. And, you know, pulling up their tour dates right now, which I'm going to do on my screen while I'm talking, they just don't stop. Like, you know, as we mentioned when we were talking uh, I asked them, they've got shows coming up soon. It's actually, uh, they start out on November 21st in Nottingham. Uh, and from right now, while I'm editing this, that's about two weeks, around two weeks. We got Nottingham, Newcastle, Manchester, Brighton, uh, and then they get a little bit of a break and then they go to Australia as, you know, first time for them. And there are more dates on here. The last time I looked, they only had two dates on here, and now they've got three more festivals <laughs> added as well. Um, and then they go back at the start of the year to uh, France and a ton of shows in France. And then they've got the techno tour that we were talking about, which is their biggest headlining tour to date. Some of the arenas that they're doing on this tour are a market arenas in Europe, man. For a band like this to be doing that is absolutely incredible. They've got that whole tour. I know they were saying that they're going to definitely be rescheduling the uh, U.S. dates and coming back to the U.S. for a tour and then festivals. Like, I just don't see any stop to these guys anytime soon, man. And like I said, that is just such a really, really cool thing to see for bands and especially in the time we're in now because it's been very difficult for a lot of bands to tour post-pandemic. Uh, if anybody didn't see the video that I did recently on YouTube, we were talking about the cost and availability of tour buses, specifically in the U.S., but it's also a thing that's affecting bands in Europe. Like the the rental costs on everything have gone up and just the, the prices of gas. And it's crazy, man. Like costs on rentals for bands are double what they were before the pandemic. And it's put a big strain on the industry. So 
you know, if you want to support these guys, man, go buy a ticket, go see them live, go, you know, buy their special edition vinyls, buy, you know, stream their music. Any little thing you do helps a band, man. If any band, you know, I know a lot of bands don't like streaming because they say they don't earn much off of it or anything, but I think when it comes down to it, any band would tell you every stream helps anything like that helps because it does give them more exposure and helps them out a ton. So, but man, this was a great episode. I was super stoked to be able to do this with Kevin. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to some of the other guys very soon. Uh, I do have another episode lined up already. So episode 18 of this, this is going to be a super interesting one for the next time. I'm going to be having on a girl named Carrie Heisler. She works behind the scenes mostly. Um, she is a local, what I would call crew hand in the industry, stage hand, sorry. Um, she's in the Detroit area and she's done a lot of uh, local work for festivals I've done up there. I know she's done faster horses and stuff like that, but her full-time job is that she is the lighting director for the Detroit Red Wings NHL team, the ice hockey team, and also for the Detroit Pistons NBA basketball team. If that's ringing any bells for anybody, yes, this is the lighting director that kind of went viral in the metal community for doing on ice intros for the Red Wings with like death metal and grindcore. Like there are videos online of her where she's programming lighting shows with the team coming on the ice to like, you know, I, I think I've heard Die Art is Murder, Lorna Shore, Black Dahlia Murder. So I'm really excited to talk to her and find out how she's able to do that because of, you know, music licensing and stuff. And you don't see the green light for that kind of stuff in professional sports that much. I mean, you know, the the team coming on the ice to Black Dahlia murder. I mean, that's sick, dude. So episode 18 is going to feature her. I'm recording that very soon and I'm super excited to talk to her. So be on the lookout. But in the meantime, again, you can catch me on Discord. You can catch me on Twitch three days a week. Tons of different social media. If you're watching on YouTube, I will have links to all of that stuff in the description of the video. And again, to every single person that took the time to listen to this on Spotify, Google, or Apple, or watch on YouTube, thank you so very much. I appreciate your time a ton. I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed doing it with Kevin. And until next time, this has been the Back Lounge Podcast. My name is Tank. Wherever you are, be safe. Be kind to each other, and I'll see you guys all very soon.